Hi, everyone. What's up, friends? All of you out there watching, I'm so glad you joined us today. I'm Miss Anna, and this is my friend, Miss Sarah. Hi. There's nothing but summer fun here at Engedi yes, going on, right? That's right. And we're talking about what it means to have confidence. Mm -hmm. And I love confidence because it's learning to see yourself the way God sees you. That's right, Miss Anna. Yeah. When you know how much God loves you, you can get in the mix and take on any challenge that life throws your way. That's right. I'm pretty confident this week will be the best one yet. I hope Mainly so. because Ooh. I think we're doing something with these mallets. Ooh. We can hit things with these mallets. I don't know if it's the same for you, Miss Sarah, but smacking things with a mallet is sometimes exactly what I need to do to relieve some stress in my life. Oh, yeah. That oh, one yeah. level, you know, like if you're, you are you can't pass it on Geometry Dash, you ever have yes. that? Or maybe um, it's something like your friends got together and they didn't invite you. Ooh, Ooh. I feel like that's melon time. Ooh, yeah. Or your yeah. little brother ate the last Oreo. Oh my uh, gosh, that's yes. the worst. That is the worst. Mallet time. time. Yeah. Now, I will say, Miss Anna, I don't recommend smacking people with a mallet. Oh, I that can't would smack be, you? That would be bad. That would be bad. Shoot. Actually, the things you can like, smack are pretty limited. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I just happen to have one such item here that it's to totally mallet smacking acceptable. No way. What? <laughs> Meet Clyde. Say hi, Clyde. Hi, Clyde. Now, Clyde is just a normal old chicken doing chicken things. Yes. Trying to make ends meet and provide for his chicken family. Yes, okay. But one thing that Clyde does really well is take a smack from a mallet. Oh, he wow. can take a smack and keep on cooking. Oh. Isn't that funny? Clyde! Clyde's a toughie! Man. He's toughie. Yeah, he takes that like a champ. I know. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> well, another thing you might not know, Miss Sarah, and all of you watching out there, is that Clyde has some brothers and sisters. Four of them, in fact. What? Well, I mean, three of them. There's four of them all together. Isn't that cool? There's four little chickens here. That's so funny. I think we should name them. So okay. so you have... I have Clyde here. Clyde. Yep. Okay, I think... What about Clara? Clara. Clancy. Clancy. And Clementine. And Clementine. They're all C names. That's funny. I okay. feel like... Oh, you got too many. I've got too many. Okay. This must be... Okay, anyway. Oh, you know what? Let's turn this into a game. Okay. And call it Squawk That Tune. Okay. Squawk That Tune. So, how about... Ooh, ooh. I'll play a tune by uh -huh. smacking these chickens. And okay. It'll be up to you, Miss Anna, and everybody watching to guess what it is. Okay? Okay. Go easy on me now, Miss Sarah. Okay. Sarah. I'm not sure I'll be good at this game. Okay. But go ahead. Uh, you know what? I'll start easy, and then I'll work up to, like, some more difficult things. Okay. Is that okay. okay. Okay, sure. We're going to set it up. Okay. Yeah. You want to see the chickens, everybody? Okay. Got her for chicken. <laughs> Look at this chicken. You might need two mallets <laughs> to do this, right? Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Are you ready? I'm a listening. Okay. It is. Jingle bells. Yeah. You try. Your turn. Okay. okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna listen. I have to do mm. one that I know. Mm. Um, okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'm ready. Okay. Oh, I'm really bad at this. Okay. Actually, I don't know that one. Okay, I got one. Okay, okay. I know which okay. one I'm gonna. All right, do. I'm ready. Here I'm gonna go. do this one. Okay. <laughs> if I, I feel like it's something you would hear to sport something, right? He digged me out to, to the, the ball, ball game. game. Okay, okay, yeah. Dude, that, that was fun. Really I like Dude, it. I kind of like to make your little chickens. Yeah, uh, the chickens are really fun, and it's a great way to relieve stress. Okay. Okay. 
So let's say thanks to Clyde. Thank you, Clyde, and all his little friends, his family. Thank you, friends. Oh, and you know what? That like being stress relieved. That that gets me just kind of excited. Yeah. Okay. Good job. It's epic in every way. Oh. Okay. Epic. It's about somebody who had a little bit of trouble feeling confident, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, even though mm -hmm. God was right there by oh, his side. Oh, cool. Yes. Yes. Well, before that Bible story, yes. let's take a look at our bottom line for this week, okay? okay. This is what it is. Okay. God can use you, you, no matter what. That's good, right? Yeah. Okay, good. cool. And we'll okay. see you guys after the lesson. Okay. Hey, Engetti kids. We are about to do our Engetti kids chant. Are you ready? At Engetti Kids, we know that God created us extra special. And each week, we like to remember that we were created uniquely on purpose, with a purpose, to love God, serve others, and tell the world. If you know the motions, make sure you do them with me. We love God because He first loved us. So we say, love God, and we point up. We can serve others to show God's love. So we say, serve others with our hands out, like we're giving a gift. Jesus wants to have a relationship with everyone, everywhere. So we say, tell the world and make a circle. Are you ready? Let's practice. Love God, serve others, and tell the world. Let's try one more time. Love God, serve others, and tell the world. Great job, everybody! My check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Jesus, we know we belong here because of your love for us that goes on and on forever. Jesus, we know you are with us wherever we go. We know we belong here Because of your love For us that goes on and on forever Jesus, we know you are with us Wherever we go You're there, we'll always be together So sing along with me For all the joy he brings It's going down Get in the mix We're not stopping Get in the mix
everyone, I'm Graham, and I'm here to give you a little bit of confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. When you're confident, you don't just sit around waiting for something to happen. No, when there's a game to be played, you get off the bench and play. When there's a challenge to be met, you face it head on. When there's music to be played, you get in the mix, grab an instrument, and make some noise. See what I mean? Confidence. Believe it or not, some people think the triangle isn't that important of an instrument. The band could get along just fine without it. But we know better, don't we? I mean, how else would you know when someone on TV had a good idea? Or how would you know when someone had the right answer on a game show? The answer is the Yangtze River. And of course, who can forget the dinner bell? Come and get it! Sometimes something that doesn't seem important can make a big difference. And in today's story, we'll see how God used someone who didn't think he was important. And that someone's name was... Gideon? Right, Gideon. See you in a bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Judges, chapters 6, through eight. As many times before, the Israelites turned away from God. He allowed the Midianites to take over their land. God's people hid out in caves. When they tried to grow plants or tend to livestock, the Midianites would show up and destroy their crops and animals. At last, the Israelites cried out to God for help. He heard them and sent the angel of the Lord to a man named Gideon, who was threshing grain in a wine press. Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. All Gideon could do for a moment was stop and stare. Uh, uh, pardon me, sir, you, you said the Lord is with us? Then why has all this happened? The, the Lord has deserted us. You are strong. Go and save Israel from the power of Midian. I am sending you. Uh, pardon me, sir, but how can I possibly save Israel? My, my family is the weakest in the tribe, and I'm the least important member. I will be with you. Even with a direct message from the Lord, Gideon was still nervous about the whole thing. Uh, give me a special sign, then I'll know it's really you talking to me. So God gave Gideon a sign, sending fire to burn up meat and bread. God's spirit was with Gideon, and when the Midianites and the Amalekites gathered to attack, Gideon sounded a trumpet for the Israelites to follow. But even as the army gathered, Gideon once again pleaded to God for another sign. God responded by letting dew fall on a fleece, and then on the next day, only on the ground surrounding it. Okay. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. At last, Gideon was convinced God wanted to use him. He camped with 32,000 men at the spring of Herod and prepared for battle. Here, God spoke again. I want to hand Midian over to you, but you have too many men. Too many? Israel might brag, my own strength has saved me. Announce to the army, those who tremble with fear can turn back. Gideon did just as the Lord instructed. There, Lord, 22,000 men have gone home. <laughs> Only 10,000 left to fight. There are still too many men. Have you seen the Midianite army? Take the men down to the water. There, I will reduce the number of them for you. Even though it must have worried Gideon to lose more of his army, he did just as the Lord said. Field trip to the lake, everyone. At the water's edge, the Lord said, Some men will drink the way dogs do. They will lap up the water with their tongues. Separate them from those who get down on their knees to drink. Gideon watched carefully. Most men got on their knees and drank directly from the water, but 300 men cupped the water in their hands and lifted them to their mouths to lap. So, God, I send those 300 men home and keep the other 9,700, right? With the help of the 300 men who lapped up the water, 
I will save you. Let all the other men go home. Oh. Um, okay. Yes. Gideon sent home every single person in the army except those 300 men. Get some sleep. Tomorrow we will figure out what's next. That night, the Lord spoke to Gideon once more. Get up. What? Oh, uh, I'm awake. Gideon stumbled out of his tent. Below, the campfires and torches of the enemy armies covered the entire valley. So many. Like, like a swarm of locusts. Go down to the camp. Listen to what they are saying. After that, you will not be afraid to attack. Wondering if he might be dreaming, Gideon snuck down the mountain to hover in the shadows at the edge of the camp. He could hear voices from a nearby tent. I had a dream. A round loaf of barley bread came rolling into the camp. It hit the tent with great force and knocked it flat. Wow, but that can only be the sword of Gideon from Israel. God has given him the whole camp. Gideon listened in shock. Wow, God, thank you. At once, Gideon scrambled back up the hill to the Israelite camp. Get up, get up. The Lord has handed the Midianites over to you. Quickly, Gideon separated the 300 men into three groups and handed each one a trumpet and a clay jar with a torch inside. Watch me, do what I do. I'll go to the edge of the enemy camp. Then we'll blow our trumpets from all around the camp and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and his men headed quietly down the slope, fanning out in groups to surround the vast enemy camp. Okay, get ready. As soon as Gideon sounded his trumpet, he smashed his jar so the torch shone brightly. The other 300 men did the same. For the Lord! A sword the Lord! The Israelites held their ground, but their enemies panicked, confused by the trumpets and bright lights that pierced the dark night. They're coming from everywhere! The enemy armies were so confused, they began to fight each other, and then they fled in fear. After the men, Gideon and the Israelites chased their enemies all the way to the Jordan River and beyond until all the enemy armies were destroyed. The Israelites begged Gideon to rule over them. I will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Yep, Gideon was an underdog, filled with doubt, but he still chose to follow God, and God used him to save the Israelites. According to Gideon, he was the least important family member and the weakest family of his tribe. He certainly didn't think God would use him to lead an army to victory over their enemies, but sometimes God uses people who don't seem important to make a big difference. You see this all through the Bible. Think of Jesus. He didn't pick the strongest, smartest, and most holy people to be his 12 closest friends. He picked regular guys, fishermen and tax collectors to be his disciples. And they went on to make a huge difference in the world. Hey, maybe that means God can use someone like me too, or someone like you. We don't have to know everything. We don't have to be important. God can do big things through us. Maybe he can use you to help a friend who's having a bad day. Maybe he can use you to solve a problem in your community. Or you might invent something that's never existed before. You might not think you're that important, and you might not think you're ready to make any kind of big difference. But the truth is, God thinks you're important, and he's totally ready to use you for something amazing. That's the one thing to remember today. God can use you no matter what. Knowing that should give you a little confidence. Why is my mouth watering? Oh, must be dinner time. I'll see you around. Wow, Miss Sarah, the people begged Gideon to be the ruler after such a huge display of leadership. But guess what? Gideon refused. He told them they already had a ruler. Do you yes. know what it is? Do you remember what the, what the story said? God. So if you think about it, Gideon was a total underdog, yeah. right? No one expected much from him. And yet, look what he did. 
Look what he did, even yeah. though he didn't even expect much from himself. Look what he did because God. Yeah, yeah. and you know, Gideon was full of doubt and yeah. uncertainty, and he still chose to follow God. And yeah. God used him to do something absolutely incredible. Right. He, God chose to use Gideon to save the Israelite yeah. people. And here's the simple truth, kids. It's our bottom line this week. We just said it a little while ago. It's this, that God can use you no matter what. Let's say it together, okay? okay. All of you out there say it with us too. Ready? Ready? God, God can use you no, no matter, matter what. what. Yeah, he absolutely can. Yeah. You could be the smallest of the small, and you could even be totally unsure of yourself. Yeah. You might not think you can do much, but God can use you yes. to do anything. Literally anything. I love you. You can be confident when you trust. And God loves us so much, and His yes. love is so good. Yeah. It's the kind of love that David sang about in the Psalms, and Ooh. that's our memory verse for this month, okay. Sarah. So, how about we read it together? Okay. Ready? Yeah. I, I remain, remain confident, confident of this. this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. Yeah. It's a great verse. I love that. You know, God's love can give you that kind of confidence. And yeah. remember this, God can use you no matter what. That is the truth. Yeah. And I love it. And I yeah. want to pray for us right now. Okay. And ask God to help us. God, okay. thank you so much for this lesson about Gideon and how you had him do something incredible. But it's because of you, not because of Gideon. Yeah. Gideon didn't even have enough confidence, but you are able to do anything. And so he was able to do an amazing work for you, God. And I pray that you would help each one of us to see ourselves the way you see us so that we can do what you want us to do in our everyday life, even the hard stuff that seems impossible. We love you and thank you for helping us this week to follow you and to be more like Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.